the conceptual framework that I use in order to try to make some sense of the political condition that we live in today, and which I see around me in the cities in which I dwell, is uh, uh, structured around making a distinction between, on the one hand, politics, and on the other hand, the political. In French, le politique, the political, la politique, politics. In German, das politische, as the political, and die politique, as politics. The sphere of political life is split into two. On the one hand, there are what we call in everyday language politics. That is, the strategies, actions, procedures and institutions through which a diverse set of people meet to find an answer to an agreed problem. Policy making. That the process of policy making. And that all sorts of institutions associated with that, like parliaments, participatory councils on a variety of geographical scales, and that all sorts of procedures associated with that, like go and vote every four years or every five years, or be invited as a concerned citizen to join others to come up with a solution for an agreed problem. Um, is the routines and the practices of everyday politics. Uh, that is what I call la politique, politics. It's what we can see, what we observe, and what we academics and scholars are very good at analyzing. Who's doing that, who's involved, why are they doing it, uh, who takes what kind of position within that, etc. That's politics. The political is something quite radically different. The political stands for the non-existence of society as a coherent organ. Or in other words, in order to understand what the political is, you have to see the social as something that does not have an a priori order. Why does society, why does society not exist? Because we disagree. That's precisely why we invented democracy at some point. And we can argue for a long time when precisely democracy as a politics was instituted. Some would take it back to the old Athenian polis. Others would situate it somewhere in the 16th, 17th century. That was precisely, precisely invented to account for the fact that we disagree. That we radically disagree. That there is no coherent view, desire, that brings us all together, whether it's Berliners, Germans, Europeans, or the people of the world. Right? So the political is nothing else than that that accounts for the non-existence of society, or in other words, that accounts for the radical heterogeneity that constitutes the social, uh, and that uh, stands for the fact that there is continuous debate, disagreement, or what Rancière would call dissensus, what Chantal Mouffe would call antagonism. Now, it is important to understand these two distinct conditions, politics as the everyday routines and rituals, and the political as the emergence of radical disagreement uh, and antagonism. Whereby I would add that the political also is the moment where equality comes in, particularly in a democratic political uh, uh, configuration. We invented democracy. Yeah, it's an invention. Yeah. 
whether it's good or bad, I do not want to speak about. But what it does presume is the equality of each and every one who is speaking being. This is the Aristotelian view of what the political is. That is the equality of each and every one speaking being, which also means that each and every one can occupy the place of power in democracy. Or put differently, the place, the location, this is very geographical too, the location of power in democracy is, as Claude Lefort put it, structurally vacant. In contrast to a pre-democratic type of society where often a divine origin was assumed, where God took the structurally the side of power, or in empires where the divine figure of the emperor took structurally the place of power. In democracy, the place of power is structurally vacant. Anyone and everyone can claim and has the capacity to, we assume, to claim that place of power. So, the notion of equality in this context is not a sociological concept. It's a political concept of equality. And I think this is really important. Because now to come back to what I said earlier, that over the past 20, 30 years or so, we critical theorists have been very, very good at explaining unequal social relationships. We've mobilized all manner of critical theories to locate the, the, the procedures, relations and dynamics that produces these inequalities. You have the Marxists to put it on class, the feminists to put it on gender, the post-colonialists to put it on the subaltern subject, etc. Each time assuming that he would find in this sociological analysis the, lever the leverage to remedy that inequality sometime in the future. Now, that's a properly utopian idea. The democratic and political presumes that we're equal. That's the very foundation upon which democratic politics is founded. Now, here is where the importance comes of distinguishing between the political as the sphere for the uh, expression of heterogeneity, difference, disagreement, on the basis of the presumption of equality, on the one hand, and politics as a regime of policy making on the other which always undermines, perverts, at least partially, this principle of political equality. In other words, politics is always at least oligarchic, if not worse. That is, every policy-making procedure is one that is, at least in part, more or, more or less exclusive. It silences, it excludes, it disavows those who disagree. 